today I've got uh, a very special guest today. I'm actually talking to Alan Dibb, who wrote a, a really good book that I've been recommending to you guys. In fact, if you're in my Bulldog Mindset Membership program, uh, you know that this was one of the required readings for, I think, the se second month in the program because it's such a good book. This book you know, just came out of nowhere and, uh, and really blew me away. I've been talking about it with all my entrepreneur friends about how just how good and concise of a book this is on everything that you need to know about marketing. So I've got Alan here, and, uh, and what we're going to be talking about today are the three essentials uh, that you need for rapid business growth. So if you're trying to grow your business, uh, you know what what are these three essential things? So uh, so thanks for thanks for joining us, uh, Alan. Appreciate it. Hey, John. Pleasure to be on the show. Man, um, I have to tell you, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, your assistant sent me this this book, right? And uh, your book, and at first it kind of just sat on my on my desk because I get a lot of books and stuff. And you know, I, I started flipping through it, and I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of moved it up the stack, and I emailed her back, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll make this one my next one. And she sent me some ideas of, of how I could do video like reviews on this. And then I was talking to uh, one of my buddies who runs a, a book summary company, and he said, have you read the one page marketing plan? And I was like, well, wait a minute. I like this is kind of, you know, it's a self published book. I hadn't seen a big launch and everything. I was like, how do you know about this book? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, Someone contacted me and I got the book and I and I love it. So, uh, you know, I picked it up. I think that day and I got through it in in just in just a day. I just I was hooked once I started reading it. So, uh, you know, great book. Yeah, I, I love it. Thanks so much, John. I appreciate the kind words. It's done, it's done very well, and I really appreciate all the feedback. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I've been recommending this book a lot. So, guys, by the way, if you haven't, you know, go go pick up a copy. Um, you know, I'm not getting paid to endorse it or anything like that. I, I just when I find good stuff, you know, I want to share it with you guys. So, um, so what maybe uh, maybe before we jump into these three uh, essentials uh, for for rapid business growth, uh, maybe you can give a little bit of background for for people who don't know who you are. You know, uh, what's what's your background? What uh, how did you get into this? Yeah, look, look, my my background is really, um, you know, I started business life as a dead broke IT geek. I was good at what I did. You know, I, it was just such a struggle to get new clients and new lead flow. And so I probably spent about a decade really trying to self-learn marketing, self-learn sales, all of these sorts of things. And, you know, it took me far too long to cost far too much uh, and I had too much trial and error. But, you know, I ended up perfecting the process and I built that business uh, to be quite a substantial business and I, I sold it for more money than, than I'd ever seen in my life. Then I built another business in the telecom space. We went from zero to four years later being one of the fastest growing uh, companies in Australia, one of the top 100 fastest growing companies. And I, oh, wow. I ex exited that. So that was really cool. And um, so now, um, you know, I, I help other businesses with their rapid business growth strategy. How do they get new clients, new leads, new prospects in the door on a regular systemized basis so it's predictable so that they're not worrying about, you know, what do I do next? How do I get the next client in the door? So we're building those systems. Okay. Okay. And what what gave you the idea to write the the book, the one page marketing plan? Yeah. So so the 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 book came about because I was working with with clients. I was coaching clients, and I wanted them to put together a marketing plan, right? So yeah. um, and they felt it was too difficult, too expensive, too uh, too much work, and all of that. And if, uh, a lot of the a lot of them were right, you know, because you know traditionally that has been a big, long, intensive process, and so. I came up with the the, the framework um, a, as a need for my clients to fulfill a need for my clients, and um, it worked really well. The compliance rate went went up. I had more clients uh, putting together a marketing plan, and so, you know, uh, it was a process long before it was a book, and it worked so well. I thought I've really got to get this out to a wider audience, and that's why I put it in book form. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where I think the reason why it's been resonating so well with with myself and my entrepreneur buddies that have you know anyone that's done internet marketing and has an email list and everything is that it's like those nine boxes that you have. It's 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 distill. It's exactly what you need and nothing more. It's like because we try to teach people all the time, and it's like you're you're trying to explain to someone. You know, I've got a bunch of coaching clients, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, you gotta you gotta build traffic somehow, and then you gotta get an email list, and you gotta you know you, you gotta you gotta do this, and you gotta have a sales page and conversions, and and they're mm -hmm. overwhelmed. But then it's like when I show them that picture, and it's like, no, it's these nine things. It's these three, and then 
it's these three mm -hmm. and then it's these three uh it, it just clicks it makes sense and it's like all this trying to information i'm trying to dump on people it, it's right there in one visual form so so i really appreciate it. and it's also a reminder for myself just like this checklist i'm like okay am i doing every single one of these things in these boxes so i really love that so perfect, perfect. i'm really glad it resonated so um, let's uh, let's jump into this. So what uh, we're going to talk about the the three essentials for rapid business growth. What uh, what is number one? Yeah. So uh, number one is really mindset, and I, I don't want to get all woo woo and kind of all of that sort of stuff. Y you've read the book, you know. I'm very no BS. I'm practical. I go for the for the stuff that um, really make it moves the needle. Because, like I said, I'm from an IT background. I'm not from like a creative marketing branding you know, background and all of that. Like, uh, and you know, IT guys just want to know the steps, right? What's step one? What's step right. two? What's step three? So, <laughs> um, so. Um, uh, really step one is all about mindset and it's the mindset shift that I had early on in my business and it wasn't because uh, I came up with this idea I was speaking to a mentor I was saying you know man like uh, I, I'm really having a lot of trouble uh, getting new clients you know the clients that I have they love what, what I do and he said to me um, when do people find out that you're good at what you do and that you deliver a great service and I said well obviously and they buy and he said well before they buy they only know how good your marketing is so you mm. need to become a marketer of it services not uh, an it guy who does marketing and so that mindset shift blew my mind and it changed it's really changed the course of my business because then i knew i had to be a marketer of what i did so you know if you're a coach if you're a sell seo if you do uh, sell physical products, whatever it is, you need to have that mindset shift of, hey, I'm a marketer now and I sell this stuff. I'm not a technician who delivers IT services or I'm not a doctor who delivers medical services. I'm not a lawyer who delivers, you know, yes, the delivery part is important, but that's all about customer retention. But when we're, when we're talking about getting customers in the door, it's about customer acquisition. So how do we get those people in the door? And you do that by becoming a really good marketer of whatever service you, uh, you're in, whatever product or service you're in. So having that mindset shift of you're a marketer of what you do, you're not a lawyer, doctor, IT guy or whatever else. I love it. That's that. I, I agree a hundred percent. I, you know, one of the very first courses I ever sold online was called how to market yourself as a software developer. Cause I came from a software development background and I discovered in my career, as I started, you know, getting on podcasts and started building up my blog and building up my followings that I was marketing myself as a software developer. Mm. And that was the true value. Cause I, I was a really good programmer mm. and I kept on increasing that skill. And the more I increased the skill of programming, it didn't it didn't make me it didn't move the needle much i didn't get yeah. paid a lot more for being a better programmer but when i was a better marketer my income tripled it was it was yep. amazing to make that shift so yeah and you know there's not i certainly felt that in my first business i i yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than someone who's technically worse than what you do but mm -hmm. like they make they make much more money than you do they they do their business is doing much better you know i had i, I was training other it guys who were doing much better from a business perspective th th than I was. So I was technically far ahead of them in terms of knowing knowing what to do with the, the computers and how to set them up and all of that sort of thing. But um, you know they were doing far better than me financially because they knew how to get clients in. They knew how to get clients in the door and service them and have them come back. And you know that was ex incredibly frustrating to me. And I'm sure there are people listening right now who know a competitor who's technically worse than they are in the delivery of what they do, but they're doing much better financially just because, you know, they're able to acquire more customers or have a better customer acquisition strategy. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very true. Yeah. I, I think of it sometimes as like, you know, not that you should sell an empty box, but essentially you could be selling an empty box and and the customer wouldn't find out until they opened the box and found out it was empty. But the whole, yeah. every decision up to that point of, purchasing the whatever you're selling in that empty box uh it came from your marketing it didn't come from you having an excellent product only like exactly. you said it's just a customer retention you know obviously if you sell people empty boxes you're not going to be in business very long but of course <laughs> <laughs> And customer retention is very, very important, delivering yes. a fantastic experience. And that's that's part of the one-page marketing plan is how do I deliver a world-class experience? How do I get those referrals happening? So you do have to deliver a great service and a great product. But, you know, getting 10% better at product delivery or 10% or better at your service 
it's it's pro it might have an incremental effect on your income, but it's not going to have an exponential effect. Whereas getting ten percent better at marketing can have a dramatic exponential increase in your on your income. For sure, definitely, it's a multiplier. For sure, it's. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so so here's here's a question kind of related to this. Um, so, so, I mean, I agree with you hundred percent that, that people need to make that mindset shift to think of themselves as marketers, but I get two kind of responses from a lot of people. One of them is they think that the product, you know, they're very excited. They mm -hmm. want to start a business and it's all about the product. They're like, I have the best product. I have the best software I'm mm -hmm. going to create. And mm -hmm. then the second one, and they're usually related is they say, I'll just hire someone to do marketing for me. Right. So they don't want to make that. They don't want to become a marketer, they, especially in the software development world. They think it's sleazy. They, they yeah. and and they think they could just hire someone to do that. What do you what do you say to those kind of people? That actually moves really, really well into the the second key to the rapid business growth, which is team, right? Mm -hmm. And and that that's a great question because a lot of people talk about, yeah, hey, uh, can't I just delegate my marketing, outsource my marketing? I'll I'll get an agency or I'll get someone to to do it for me. And yes, you do need a team to execute on your marketing. But here's here's what I tell people: you need to own the strategy at least. You need mm -hmm. to know the target market, the messaging, all of that sort of stuff. You as the business owner, you must own that strategy, right? So, getting someone else to do it usually won't end well. You'll you'll usually spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and it won't work very well. Now, in terms of the tactical execution, absolutely, you should get, mm -hmm. uh, you should have a team. You should have someone who's uh, reaching out to potential clients, who's answering questions, who's doing your social media, who's doing those tactical things. Because here's what we know. Uh, we know that you need three types of people in a business uh, to do marketing really well. You need the entrepreneur type. That's people like you and I. We're the ideas people. We like to take risks. We have we have a new idea every 10 minutes, right? And it right. frustrates the, the rest of our team <laughs> uh, very often. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we move to the next bright, shiny uh, object. It's just who we are, right? That, that's our D DNA. And exactly. Uh, then you need... But you need that person, right? But then you, you also need the specialist. The specialist is a person who will help you deliver your product or service or make your dream a reality. And that's sometimes you. Like if you're a if you're the doctor, if you're the lawyer, if you're the IT guy, that sometimes can be you. But sometimes it's somebody in your team or some someone that you hire. And most of the time, those two roles are covered, the entrepreneur role and the specialist role. Most of the time, they're, they're covered pretty well. The role that's almost always missing um, is this manager role. So the person who wakes up in the morning and thinks about, right, today's Monday morning, what do we do from a marketing perspective? And they follow checklists, they follow lists. This is the stuff that bores the entrepreneur type like you and me. We just, we, we either start doing it and then move on to the next thing or uh, we, we just don't do it or we get too busy or we don't feel like it today and it just doesn't get done. So you need someone in your team who's going to be that manager role who gets the stuff done, right? right. Who, who you, they, they've got the strategy, they've got the plan, and they're just following checklists or they're creating checklists for you. And for me, it's my team. I, I love my team, you know. And, and you know, lo, like you said, you 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 spoke to someone in my team to get this podcast organized. Like if it was left up to me, probably would have just ended up in my inbox. I probably wouldn't have got back to you or whatever. Right. Not because I'm slack, just because I'm really busy. I'm working on yeah. a, lot of, a lot of projects and and stuff like that. And you know. I, I, I'm an ideas person. So so really, you need that manager role. You need all three roles in that business to really make it work well, but particularly that manager role to get stuff done. Because there's a personality type who they hate the entrepreneurial stuff. They hate the risky mm -hmm. stuff. They hate the ideas and the creativity and all that. They just want to follow a checklist, right? They Or they just want to create a checklist and they, they love that stuff. So you've got to get that that person in your business and get them doing that stuff. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's um, that's something I've I've always struggled with. I don't think I, I don't really have that person in my business, but I could I could see the need of that because it's almost like you're hiring a boss to tell you what to do every day, right? It's like <laughs> well, 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 it's actually it's actually better than that. It, it's um, it, it's hiring someone who will just do it, right? So yeah, you, yeah. You, you, they don't have to tell you what to do. And I used to try to fit a round peg in a square hole. I used to say to the entrepreneur, "No, you've just got to get this stuff done." But like you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you can hire this out cheaper than your own hourly rate the vast majority of the time. So I highly recommend you do get someone in your team to do that. 
So what does this role look like? This I'm very curious about this because I feel like I need this person, but I haven't had enough stuff. It's like I'm almost trying to hire like a project manager, but there's not mm -hmm. always a project going on or I mean, I guess there's continual product projects. What yeah. what kind of like role or what responsibilities do they generally have? Right. That so so let, let's let's flip this around. What's on the what's been on your to do list for the last three months that you just haven't gotten to doing? Oh shit! I've got a board. <laughs> that, I've actually got like a Trello board that I've created a new Trello board from, where I've pulled that stuff because that list got too long, right? So I've got a, I've got a pretty long list of uh, of projects. Like so, one project would be um, so one of my books, uh, the Complete Software Developer Career Guide. It's like an eight hundred page book, but uh, because it's so thick, it costs so much money to print. So what I want to do is I've got it pretty well spaced out. I'd like to have someone go through, reflow the whole thing, manage that project, maybe test out some other covers, bring it down to 500 pages uh, so Perfect. we could sell it cheaper. So that's one project. Perfect. So uh, one, of the, one of the skills that I love that marketing coordinator role to have is copywriting because copywriting touches everything, right? It's mm -hmm. going okay. to be part of your marketing campaigns. It's going to be part of your uh, website copy. It's going to be part of your email sequences, those sorts of things. So that's the really the one essential skill I want that person to have. Uh, most of the rest of the stuff can be taught, like how to use your CRM, how to upload stuff into podcasts and all of that sort of thing. So I would hire that person and say, right, your first project is going through and reducing this book from 800 pages to 500 pages, summarizing some of the stuff that that is too uh, long-winded or whatever. Or maybe you might split it up into three volumes. You might say, look, volume one, volume two, volume three. Uh, I want you to go through and re really do that. That would, be, that would be project number one for them. The, the next thing is you're going to want to promote that book, right? So right. you're going to, so how, when we think about how to promote a book and, you know, I've got personal experience here, um, we reach out to podcasts, we reach out to reviewers like we did with you, um, all of those things. And those things are a weekly process in my team. So like there's right. someone dedicated in my team who just reaches out to podcasts, uh, po podcasters, organizes uh, a time that works for both of us and all of that sends all the material, you know, head charts and summaries and all of that sort of stuff. So um, so that's a weekly process. So you're going to want to do the same thing. And I, and I wrote this book a few years ago, and we do more promotion now than we did when we first launched. Like a lot of authors, what they do, they spend years writing a book, then right. they have a big, big bang kind of launch, you know, one month, two months, and then that's it. They're, they're not promoting their book anymore. And I just find that bizarre. I mean, you spent years writing a book, and then you mm. spent two months promoting it and forgot forgot about it so I've made that a process within my team someone's reaching out to podcasters someone's reaching out to reviewers um, where we're working with uh, you know pe readers who are asking questions and stuff like that so we make sure that they're all answered and we ask for reviews and things like that so we're proactively managing the, this thing so it's getting gaining a life of its own it's not kind of uh, waiting there and guess what I'm doing literally zero of it other than showing up to interviews like this like literally the first time that I knew I was going to do this interview was this morning I looked at my calendar I said what have I got on I looked at okay I've got a coaching call this morning another coaching call and then oh, okay I've got John Sonmez uh, I've got a podcast interview so um, so all of that was handled by my team and so you know, if this was left up to me, just wouldn't get done because I don't have enough hours in the day and I don't, and I'm moving on to the next big idea. And that's really what I'm best at. So if we, if we go back to you, it's hiring that role, first of all, to run that project. So you're going to have stuff that's kind of one-off projects like, like your book. And then you're going to have stuff that's recurring, like the outreach, like the replying to people, like the social media posting and all of that sort of stuff. So you're always going to have something happening in the team. You, you, they, they're called sometimes infinity projects. They're projects that run forever. Okay. 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 Now that you describe it that way, maybe I do have some of that role because I've got a, you know, I've got a person that does the video editing, uh, but he also like schedules out the podcast and everything. Right. So he does like graphics. So he's got like a, a, a diverse skill set. And then I've got in the other business and another person who's running like the membership program and, and bringing people in. 
but uh, so yeah, so maybe I am, I am hitting that. So that's that's good. good. But uh, but maybe I need another. <laughs> I it's need to grow some more. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like potentially you might need that coordinator role. So like who mm. who's coordinate like everybody else? Like who's coordinating the video editor and who's coordinating the copywriter and all of that? So essentially a project. You could call it a project manager or a marketing coordinator. It's yeah. so that you can get on with just creating content because that's what you're best at. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, that's really, that's really helpful. Okay. So that's number two then is, is to have the, the proper team. Is that what you yeah, would say? Or? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So number one, number one is mindset, really understanding that you're in the business of marketing. Number two is really all about having that team in place, having that entrepreneur role, that specialist role, and then that manager role to make sure that you're your strategic stuff is done and your tactical stuff gets done. So number three is really all about having a plan. And you know, you know, it's no mistake. It's no, um, it's no mistake that my book is called the One Page Marketing Plan, and it all starts from a plan. You know, so many people just do random acts of marketing. You know, they they say, "Oh, I'll, I'll just do some SEO. Oh, that didn't work. All right, I'll try some pay per click advertising. Okay, let's let's try Snapchat. Let's try Instagram and all of this sort of stuff." And there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. I mean, I I I do all, all of that stuff, but you want to have a plan where you know where each fits in, like like. Why are we doing Instagram? Why? What is the purpose of our website? Like, what what do we want our website to actually do? Uh, do we want people to buy stuff? Do we want people to contact us? Do we want people to opt in? All of those sorts of things. What do we do once they opt in? Right? Do we, right. Uh, you know, do we follow them up manually? Do we have an email sequence and all of that? And once they once they've opted in, um, you know, how do we convert them to paying clients and all of those sorts of things? So a marketing plan answers all of those questions, and, and so it's absolutely essential that you have a plan because when we look at any profession where the stakes are high, they always have a plan. You know, like if you if you you know pilots have a flight plan, military right. have a military operations plan. If you go to a doctor, he's got a treatment plan. You know, imagine you step on a plane and you overhear the pilots talking, and one guy says, "Hey, have you got the flight plan?" And the other guy goes, "Ah, don't worry about the flight plan. We know how to get there, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't you freak out? You know, uh, and so the stakes are too high, and." The exact same thing is true of business, right? The stakes are really high. You know, your business is on the line. And if you don't have a good plan on how to get new clients, new prospects, new revenue, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And it's, you know, the, it's no accident that nine out of 10 or eight out of 10 or however many business was fail in the first five years, because when you have a look, they didn't have a plan. They just started becoming a lawyer or a doctor, an IT guy, software guy, and they just started with product. You know, they didn't start with a plan. They didn't know who they were serving. They didn't know what message they were going to go out with. They didn't know how they were going to reach that that target market. And so you've got to have a plan that covers those things. And, you know, like I said, that was one of the first things I was working on with clients early on. And it was, a, you know, perceived as a difficult, expensive process. And to some extent it was, but now there's no excuse. Literally in a single page, you can have a comprehensive direct response marketing plan for your business. And that'll take you 20, 30 minutes to fill in. You know, that's, uh, that's not hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. That makes a lot of sense uh, that those random acts of marketing definitely are, uh, are happening, happening too often. It's funny. I, I think a lot of, a lot of the people I coach too, it's like, they have no idea. They're so focused on the product. They have no idea how they're actually going to acquire customers. And when I ask the question, mm -hmm. how you're going to acquire customers, there's, they haven't really even thought, they just think, Oh, I'll run some Facebook ads or something like yeah. that. And yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not always the best way and and you know not thinking that out ahead of time is is a, is a big problem i think so yeah that makes a lot of sense and it's good now to have it like you said i think in one page you can fill this out you can you can see mm -hmm. I, I like how you can kind of just see it clearly from i need to get the the customer to i need to you know to send have a message to to you know, convert the customer, and uh, and then what are you doing afterward? You're following up. You're you know getting referrals. Like all of that, connecting that all together. I think it, it, you know just makes it makes it a lot more real for someone. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You can. It, it's visual. It's easy to do, and it's a, it's a living plan. Like uh, like in I remember in my first business, I hired uh, a consultant to help me put together a business plan, and part of that was a marketing plan. And it was like 70, 80 pages, had graphs and projections and all of this sort of stuff. And 
guess what I did with it? I shoved it in the top drawer of my desk, never yeah. saw it again until I was cleaning out my office to move out. And, you know, I pick up this document, I chuck it in the trash, cost me thousands of dollars to put together because it wasn't practical. Like it wasn't something that I could use on a daily basis, but with a, with a single page plan, you can literally have that sitting on your desk or pinned up in your office or whatever. And whenever your strategy changes or whenever something changes in your business, you can literally just update it, you know? So it's a living document, something that you can refer to on a daily basis and use in your business. It's unlike traditional business or marketing plans. They're usually too long-winded, too long, not practical enough. And so I wanted to fix that process. I wanted to, I did that initially for my coaching clients, but now it's just taking a life of its own and um, I'm seeing it everywhere. And and what do you think about, you know, I think one of the the common things that I see is, you know, is, is people try to be everywhere. So, you know, they, they start, they say, okay, well, I want to build this business. I need to build an audience. So they're like on Instagram, they're on Facebook, they're trying to do Facebook lives and YouTube lives, and then they're creating blog posts. And, you know, I feel like it's spreading a little bit thin. Like what, what do you think yeah. about, you know, picking one medium or should they, or should they be on all these mediums, you know, when they're starting out? Look, uh, eventually, but uh, I mean, when you're starting out, Pick a medium that you love and where your audience hang out. You know, if that's mm. Facebook, great. If that's Instagram, great. You know, wh whatever it is. You know, for, for me, my most of my prospects and clients are book readers. So I, I spend a lot of time on making sure that the book ranks well, that it, that the Amazon's uh, ranking well, that I'm getting lots of reviews and stuff like that. So um, you, you've you've got to pick your your medium, and then. Of course, add other mediums. Once you've got that sorted, then right. great. Add, add social. Like literally, I, I did pretty much nothing in on social media probably for the first two years, right? Because right. I was getting other more important things right. And now, now we're adding social media. Now we're at, we've added Instagram. Now we've we're adding Facebook ads and things like that. So, um, dominate one niche. And you very often a niche will hang out in one particular place, you know. So um, there are people who, you know, especially in the software industry, they're probably more on forums and things like that than they are on, you know, the latest social media and all that sort of stuff. So uh, be where your prospects are, dominate that media, dominate that niche, and then move on to new ones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting what you're doing with the book. I'm curious about, because I noticed, I mean, you're ranking really high in, in Amazon, the book, I think your Kindle, your Kindle version is like 1500. I think your print is around that overall as well, which is really, really high. So yeah. obviously you're selling a lot of copies of the book and, and you've got the audio as well. And then, you know, obviously I noticed I opted in for your opt-in uh, because you've got the one page marketing mm -hmm. plan, you know, to download that and uh, I opt into your email list. And then I saw some emails. I think the first sequence of emails you sent were mainly trying to get the call to action for me to leave a review, which I did, mm -hmm. uh, which makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Appreciate um, that. Is that your main funnel? Is that how, like, are you taking all of your kind of like even your social media and stuff and pushing everyone to the book? And then from the book, the opt-in is where you're getting your leads or do you have like multiple funnels coming in? What's, yep. Yeah. I, I, I have multiple funnels, but really, uh, you know, all, all roads lead to Rome, um, which is uh, for me, it's my mail, email list. So yes, mm -hmm. I've got the book and the book often leads to uh, my website. And the reason that my, why my website exists is so that I get people onto my mailing list. When I've got people on my mailing list, I can have a regular conversation th that's very intimate that goes to your inbox. Um, I encourage people to reply and have a con two-way conversation. So it's not just me blasting out um, random stuff. It's, you know, I want to have a conversation. Why do I want to have a conversation? First of all, because then I can understand my readers a lot better and, you know, make my book uh, really hit the mark um, when I write another book, when I write another blog post, when I create other content, but also uh, conversations lead to conversions, right? Um, right. Wh where do where do coaching clients come from? Where do people who buy your course come from? You know, they're people who you've had conversations with and uh, nine times out of 10, it came out of my mailing list and, you know, they got onto my mailing list for for one of a number of reasons they might have read my book they might have heard me on a podcast like we're we're on now maybe they've um uh, google searched something and and seo landed on my website um so there's any number of reasons how someone got onto my mailing list but that's a key key piece of uh, asset in in my business very very important
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm in hundred percent agreement with you. I, I have, I've often said that uh, you can take away everything else, take away my website, YouTube yeah. channel, everything else. But if you just leave me the mailing list, I'll build the entire business back up in a year. Uh, yeah. But you know, that's the one critical piece. So I, I definitely agree with you. It's I'm amazed though how many, especially on YouTube, it's kind of interesting. A lot of YouTubers that have really big followings, they don't have any email list. All their yeah. money, the only way they're making money is from ads. That's it. And it just, yeah. it, when I go to like YouTube conferences and I talk to these people, it just, it just blows my mind. I'm like, wow, you're making like a 10th, probably a 20th of what you could be making if you were actually running a business and not, uh, not being a quote YouTuber, but. It's not just that. It's a very fragile business. I mean, one change in the algorithm, one change mm -hmm. in, in YouTube's policies and uh, they, their business is totally wiped out. Like re remember when, when Google changed their algorithm, the, the different, you know, Penguin and all of those Google slaps and all of that sort of stuff. With Facebook, when you you had someone like your page, you used to be able to reach your entire audience. Then they came in and said, "No, if you now you can only reach a small percentage unless you you pay, unless you boost your posts." So if you're on somebody else's platform, it's it's like they're a a landlord and you're paying them mm -hmm. rent. And at any time, the landlord can kick you out. They can say, "You know what? Um, I'm changing the rules, and you're out of here." Right. So, uh, uh, but having people on your email list means that you know you own that asset you're now the owner of that and no one can take that away from you right if google changes the rules or facebook changes the rules or youtube no longer likes the type of content you do um you can still reach your audience exactly yep i agree 100 percent Okay, well, um, I, you know, I, I appreciate you you taking the time, Alan, and uh, you know, and you've got you know excellent advice. You know, I've I've already said you know the book is is awesome. I, I've really it's 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 basically the book now that you know I've got certain books that I just like hand to everyone for different things. You know, Millionaire Fast Lane is one of them. Uh, your book is is definitely going to be the one for marketing uh, now, and you know, and so so it's good to if, have a resource and something that someone can read real quickly. You know, and obviously there's a lot more depth. To, to marketing, but this gives them such a good uh, overview. So so guys, if you haven't picked up the book already, go pick it up, go check out. Uh, uh, anything else you, you want them to check out, Alan? Yeah, look, um, uh, check out the book. Um, my website is successwise.com. You can get a free copy of the One Page Marketing Plan Canvas. And, you know, a lot of people like to listen to the book. It's available on Audible. You know, mm -hmm. we're on a podcast now. So if you if you want to listen, it's a quite an easy listen. It's on Audible and you can grab it there as well. Yeah, yeah, this is one of those books, guys, too, that where like I got the audio version and the print because I want to be able to see the stuff. I wanted to listen to it while I was running so you get the idea. Then I went through it a second time and now I've got, you know, I can, it's got a good, a good number of like, you know, just printouts and, and stuff that, that I want to look at. So this is one of those books where it's, it's worth getting both, uh, both versions. So, all right, Alan, uh, thank you. I appreciate uh, you coming on here and sharing your wisdom and, uh, uh, you know, wish you wish you the best. Glad to see that the book is is killing it on Amazon as it deserves, especially that it's self published too. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, John. Pleasure speaking with you. Yeah. Take care.